Hello, gentlemen, this is Mr. Chance. And in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about sentences and sentence fragments. So in order to do that, I need to share a document with you. So ta-da, here's a document that I am sharing with you. I'm going to blow this up a little bit. There we go. So now if you're looking at this, you will notice in this section, there's two vocabulary words. And just to clarify, because there was some confusion with this earlier, due to me not being 100% clear, um, grammar vocabulary goes in our grammar notes. Okay, so everything grammar into the grammar notes. And you'll notice we have two vocabulary words for this video, sentence and sentence fragment. I'm going to ask you to pause the video right now and copy those into your notes along with the types of sentences chart that you see there. All right, so please pause now. Okay, now that you have those copied in to your notes, let's look at some examples of things. Here, I have three groups of words, and each one of these groups of words is a sentence fragment. It's a sentence fragment because it's missing either the subject or the predicate, or both the subject and the predicate, and or it doesn't express a complete thought. There's something that doesn't quite make sense. So let's look at these. If I look at this first one here, it says folk singers in the 1960s. There's no verb. There's no predicate. If I'm going to fix this sentence, I have to add what's missing. I have to add a verb. So for example, I could fix this by putting folk singers in the 1960s wrote and recorded many popular tunes. Hmm, very nice, right? And see, and now not only do I have one verb, I've got two verbs because they wrote and recorded. That is no longer a fragment. It now expresses a complete thought. If I look at the second group of words, if you remember the words, this doesn't have a subject or a verb. Notice this carefully. That looks like a subject. That looks like a verb, and in fact, they kind of are. But because that word if is there at the beginning, that turns all of those words into a subordinate clause, which we will talk about more in another video. A subordinate clause is not a sentence. It cannot stand on its own. So in this case, I have to add everything that's missing. So if you, for example, if you remember the words, you can sing along with me. Ah, so let's look at what I just added. This part here now completes the sentence. My verb is can sing, lovely verb phrase, and who can sing? You can sing. That's the subject. Very simple. Also notice, if I take out if you remember the words and you're left with nothing but, you can sing along with me, still a sentence. Very clever. All right, and then last we have, went on a tour of Brazil last year. Who did? The sentence doesn't say. It's missing a subject. So I have to give it one. I could, for example, say, my wife and I, along with several of our closest friends, went on a tour of Brazil last year. We didn't really do that. I just made that up. But in the process of making that up, I also made up a complete sentence, which was really the point. Ah, very good. My sentence now has not just one subject, but two subjects, wife and I. And then there's my verb, went lovely. When you work with this in class, what you're going to be doing is identifying groups of words. Is this group of word a sentence? Is it not a sentence? If it's not a sentence, you're going to be fixing them. Pretty simple stuff, I think. In any event, that is it for this video. 
Um, so what I'm going to do now, as soon as I remember how, is stop recording. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, hope you had a good time.